Just a quick video to show you how I'm using Grafana. So this is a data visualization tool. You might be aware of it. Uh, you can check it out over here at Grafana Labs at grafana.com. But it's very popular, very powerful. So I just thought I'd give you a bit of a rundown of how it works, all that sort of stuff. So it's showing you recent dashboards. You can change this. I'm new to it, so I'm working it all out. But down here it's showing me my recent dashboards, which was the one we were just on. And if you go in to the live schedule Apache request, you can see here that we're pulling it from Loki. So Loki is like a data ingest tool. So Loki can Grafana, Loki, Grafana, Loki. So Grafana Loki is like a ingest tool. So it ingests your log files that are written into Grafana. This use actually this actually uses a a process called prompt tail that runs and stores it in Loki, and then Grafana makes queries by your connections to your Loki environment. Um, there are lots of default plugins that you can use. Some of them do require payment if you've got the enterprise subscription. Most of them tend to be free, and there are a lot of community plugins. So you can create da nice visualizations of web requests and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so, and then so if you write, like, code, so they use this code called logql. So logql, this is a logql query that allows you to understand the um, log line. So you tell it how to translate that line. And stuff. So this is just code. so this is getting me the status codes. So we're di we're adding a sum by status codes. If you click about chart, you just see here, and it's breaking it down. So this is status codes two hundred, and you can just switch between them. This allows this to be visualized quite easily. You you get a load of configuration over here. It's great. So you get all the like different things. I, for some reason, I can't work out the name mapping. So I've done it manually here. And that needs work, but. Let's see, let's check it into a pie chart as opposed to a donut. I'll leave it a donut. But you get the idea. Um, discard. It's quite good. So let's just go over to here. So you can install it online here. It's quite simple. Simple sort of stuff. You install it here. But then when you're running it on the thing, so Loki is stored in the ETC Loki directory, and then it's got a config. So If you look at the config, so this just explains some of the stuff about how it works and stuff. So well, we've got server ports, whatever, where it's storing the data chunks, um, all that sort of stuff, DB size, caching results, blah, blah, blah. blah. You get the idea. It's uh, alert management URL, whatever. This do have to increase the um, ingest rate because I'm sending too many logs to it. But if you go back to the CD etc prompt tail, um, yep, sudo nano config, you could see here that this is how you ingest data. So this, so I've told this for the var logs. Look at this path. Anything that's var logs, asterisk asterisk with a slash asterisk asterisk. So what using wildcards, um, ingest it directly, which I think works really well. You could also send post requests. There is a Grafana, Grafana Loki post requests. Here, you can send direct requests to Loki. You don't have to use Grafana, which I think is great. It can just handle it directly. But I thought I'd just give you an overview of how it works, all that sort of stuff. I think I've covered all that. Oh, and you can do these like playlists so you can get to cycle between dashboards. It does need some work, it's a bit slow, but that's my instance and in how we've got it computed. But I hope you enjoyed, I hope this was useful.